Uh, but the whales seemingly looked at this 50k level as a, a great opportunity to get more cheap Bitcoin uh, while the, the rest of the crowd was panicking. So uh, this, this could have been it. And uh, I, I like the sign of it now. Welcome into the Thinking Crypto Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Edward, and with me is Brian from Santiment. And we're going to go into some deep dives into metrics and data as to what the hell is happening with the market crashes and what Bitcoin may do next. Brian, great to see you. Great to see you, Tony. Super duper interesting time. Obviously, polarization is at a maximum right now. We've got traders who are thinking this is the bottom, traders who are thinking this is just the beginning and we're heading back to sub 40k bitcoin and sub 1500 ethereum it's all over the place right now yeah man uh wild few days uh with the market crashing and all that with stocks bitcoin everything down um but to your point let's put the emotions aside and let's look at data and let's see what story it's telling us um we maybe we can start with bitcoin and uh we go from there absolutely i'll share my screen here and we'll dive into a few key metrics we're watching at santiment right now all right, so here's uh, just a quick overview of how the past week has been looking. Uh, obviously, to see of red, we did have that huge drop that really started, I guess, arguably on Friday um, and continued through the weekend. And then yesterday, today's Tuesday, so Monday, was uh, kind of the bloodbath day where you really started to see people panicking and talking about how... Uh, you know, they, they need to liquidate their, their crypto portfolios. Um, and we did see, by the way, a ton of liquidations, uh, which is generally a bottom indicator because you'd have a bunch of longs that are open that uh, suddenly can't continue to exist. They get liquidated. The, the ratio between longs and shorts start to neutralize, and that's kind of what's needed in order for markets to go up again. So that's kind of what happened. But you can see some of the biggest losers here. I mean, the meme coins really got crushed. Pepe down 32.5%, WIF down almost 40%. Uh, but social volume, you can see it's heavily started to flock toward Bitcoin. Almost every coin is seeing a, an increased amount of discussion compared to the relatively boring week from uh, a week ago. So overall, the market cap in crypto is down 12.5%. That is massive for one week, while volume has almost doubled in the past week, up 83% compared to the, re the week prior. So if you're wondering if people are paying attention to this, the answer is definitely yes. And it's not just a bunch of people buying the dip or a bunch of people selling the dip. It's just a, a combination of everything. Everything is kind of coming to a head. And usually these points of uh, increased attention are good signs of a turnaround. So we're not going to say definitively that this is the bottom or anything, but historically, uh, we see these kinds of huge social attention spikes really coincide with at least a temporary turnaround, kind of like what we saw with the FTX collapse back in November. Same kind of deal, huge social volume spikes, on-chain spikes all over the place, which we'll get into. Um, and you know, fingers crossed for most of you who are bullish, this could be a repeat of what we see uh, with that November 2022 bottom. Yeah. And one of the other aspects I've been looking at, too, is the COVID uh, pandemic crash of March 2020, similar situation where complete liquidation of longs. Right. And it's like you can't even go further down because it's so oversold that it has to bounce. We have some sort of rally upwards. Now, to your point, is that the ultimate bottom? We don't know because it could roll over and test some lows again before going up. So that's where you want to watch the metrics. And, and you know, look, you got to have some sort of dollar cost average strategy because no one can call the exact bottom. Great point. Yeah, I mean, that uh, Black Thursday, as they called it, was probably the most epic uh, drop that we've seen for most modern traders. I guess you can include the Mt. Gox stuff way back in the day, but um, that's kind of the, the uh, baseline for what a, a huge crash and negative sentiment 
uh, takeover can do for markets. It just completely can shift everything on on ahead right when everyone is saying that it's doomsday for crypto and we're about to you know see a, a universal collapse for years you know um once you get those kind of narratives it's very common to see things turn around mm. now um tell us a bit about what whales are doing are they accumulating are they dumping um you know bitcoin and supply excuse me bitcoin supply and exchanges and so forth yeah, so this is one of the best signs right now. Uh, as the price, which is in these green bars here, fell off the cliff beginning all, about 10 days ago, July 27th, uh, the green line here represents the 10 plus BTC wallets. They weren't going anywhere. Uh, they, they kind of flattened out. Yes, there was a bit of a drop here, which was a foreshadow to price is potentially dropping but certainly not to the level that they have. And as soon as they did even just begin to drop a little, the 10 plus wallets flattened out and actually started accumulating as we started to reach those sub 60K levels and eventually got to about 50K or a little bit below that. And they were accumulating aggressively, especially here on August 4th, uh, where they, they got almost right back up to where they were at their peak back on July 21st. So yeah, tiny little drop here in the past 24 hours, but overall the the whales aren't shaken at all. In fact, they've used this as an opportunity to jump right back in and get some more. So overall, this looks pretty good. Uh, I, I would be uh, shocked if prices fell too much further while the whales continue to bolster their wallets, um, what would be really shocking is if they start to drop again, mm. uh, then it could be a warning sign that we have a little bit of a further drop to go. Uh, but the whales seemingly looked at this 50K level as a, a great opportunity to get more cheap Bitcoin uh, while the, the rest of the crowd was panicking. So uh, this, this could have been it. And uh, I, I like the sign of it. Now, there's still a little bit of worry over the tether. Uh, shark and whale holdings dropping off a cliff and USD coin. So it's pretty clear they used a lot of their stable coins to uh, swap for Bitcoin. Mm. Uh, ideally, they'd be funneling a in a bunch of fiat and it isn't all coming from the stable coins, if that makes sense. That's interesting. So that supply is... is on the way down from from the whales right because they use it to buy bitcoin but it, it's not i guess it it, it kind of ebbs and flows anyway right so we may see some minting i think i saw this morning from whale alerts on twitter that uh you at 250 million in usdt was minted so eventually this may reflect that right yeah exactly i mean a heavy amount of those minted coins end up in these shark and whale wallets mm. um but not necessarily. I, I'd say it's kind of a, this is more just like the overall percentage of supply being held. So mm. perhaps the minting uh, could be coming from like wallets that hold over $10 million, uh, which is beyond the limits of what these lines show. Mm. And that's why as a result of those mints, the, the percentage of the supply of these shark and whale wallets went down. So it's more just a technical thing, but it's undoubtable, uh, especially because they started uh, dumping their stable coin holdings about five days ago, that they've been swapping for Bitcoin during this time. Okay. Well, that's good. I mean, that's certainly the direction we want to see uh, versus the opposite, right? Where they may be like, yeah, we're going to exit right. and hold it in stable coin for now. Okay. Um, and then with regards to exchange levels, uh, Bitcoin on exchange supply, excuse me, the Bitcoin supply and exchange levels, because that's a key uh, metric where, you know, are people going to, is it, are people loading up on the exchanges to dump or, you know, they're pulling off the exchanges to hold? Yeah, let's take a look. That's what this yellow line is representing here. Um, and it's going the right direction. We did have this big spike here about a week and a half, two weeks ago. And that was a sign we might be getting close to a top. This was a sudden move mm. of Bitcoin moving to exchanges. 
And what do, what do you know, two days later, three days later, we see the true local top and then the big dump. Uh, that's very common. Um, and since that time, we've started to see the supply moving right back off of exchanges, which is good. The less supply that's on exchanges, theoretically, means that there's less risk of a future sell-off. So overall, it's a good sign now, but the red flag happened here back on July 23rd and 24th. Hmm. Okay, good. That's a good sign that it's going down. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, do you have any uh, word trackers or sentiment trackers as far as buy and sell and um, what uh, people are talking about with regards to Bitcoin? Absolutely. Yeah, we got some really good alpha right here. So uh, this is the relation of buy calls versus sell calls mm. when using the combination of Telegram, Reddit, Twitter, slash X, 4chan, and Bitcoin talk. Uh, we even added Farcaster just in the last couple of days. So we got six different social platforms that we're now using to compile all this data. The blue is the call, the buy calls or anything that is related to bottom or bullish or bot, stuff like that. And then red is sell, selling, top, bearish, keywords like that. And you can see right here, what do you know? Everyone not everyone, but many people are saying it's time to uh, sell right when we hit that bottom mm. uh, just 24-ish hours ago. And once you get all those sell calls and the FUD rolling in, that's when the bottom hits and we start to rebound. And now those sell calls compared to the buy calls are pretty neck and neck. In fact, if I click on a shared axis, you'll see that it looks a little bit different here because they're both actually sharing the same uh, y-axis now. But regardless, when I take that off, you can clearly see that the sell calls were at their highest uh, right when the bottom was hitting. And the buy calls were mostly kind of jumbled together throughout the drop and even on the rise. So I, I think this was a really good sign. I like to click keep the shared axis off and just see when the, the sell calls are at their peak. And it was so obvious right here that uh, tons and tons of people were jumping off of the cliff right when we started to see that sub 50K Bitcoin level. Mm, interesting. And then with regards to Bitcoin and let's say the S&P 500, how are things looking there? Yeah, so there's still a, a pretty obvious correlation here. Uh, there wasn't any uh, major reason that stocks were falling the way they, they did. I've seen plenty of theories and, and lots of reports over Eastern Asia markets uh, going nuts. Like Japan had its biggest drop in like uh, some, almost 40 years, something like that. You guys in the comments can correct me if you wish, but... Um, regardless, it was a huge bloodbath. South Korea actually had to like freeze their um, cells on major exchanges mm -hmm. because it was so bad. So whatever the, if it was psychological or an emotional reason or the uh, economies on the, on the Eastern Asian side of the world were just getting wrecked, it resulted in the S&P getting just plummeted and Bitcoin went right along with it. Uh, some people say crypto leads the way and the stocks follow. Um, I'm more of a believer that it's the other way around still, yeah. but that could change in the near future. But regardless, yeah, the correlation is pretty clear here, especially since August uh, kind of began. It, it just, they've been clipped together um, very tightly. And I would expect during times where it's really polarized like this, just like Black Thursday back in 2020, uh, when when people are kind of licking their wounds a little bit, that's when you see them very tightly correlated. And when we really start to get back into a bull market, they'll start to separate from one another again. Mm. And I see on your chart here, you got gold in alignment with uh, Bitcoin and the S&P 500. So it seems like yeah. gold has been uh, doing decent. Like It's not like going crazy parabolic or anything, but it's still held up for the most part. Yeah, it had a good, a really, really good uh, summer once June kicked off here. It's like the second week of June, it just went nuts. If I hold down shift, 
and drag to its top. Yeah, gold went up 9%, which is a lot for gold. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like crypto. It's not quite as volatile. But the reason I like looking at gold is because it's a good uh, counter indicator to the dollar a lot of times. And the dollar has been uh, moving up in the last few weeks. And that has a lot to do with why crypto and others got get wrecked. When you think about it, Bitcoin has a value and its denominator is the dollar or whatever currency you have to hold. And if the fiat currency's value starts to go up, that's going to negatively affect the numerator, which is Bitcoin and its price. Uh, and a lot of people kind of forget that sometimes. So it's a healthy reminder that we don't want to see the dollar moving up. We obviously don't want to see economies collapse altogether, uh, but having the dollar kind of stay suppressed, uh, it, it helps allow Bitcoin to to crush. And especially in 2022, for those who remember the bloodbath that year was, mm. the dollar was just rising and rising and rising as interest rates were um, getting hyped to make up for the COVID year. Yeah, and, and there's so many things on the table right now or up in the air where people are waiting to see, will the Fed start doing a cut this month, maybe emergency cut because the markets need it and the economy needs it. In addition, um, you, you know, Janet Yellen at the Treasury has been doing some sort of QE, kind of backdoor QE. You know, will they ramp up on that? And because we know they have to go back to money printing, right? That's the system we live in. And uh, we've seen when they print money, and when capital becomes cheaper, you know, with lower interest rates, uh, asset prices rise. Uh, there's certainly that correlation. So it's just a matter of when is is the question, you know, we may start seeing that. Yeah, really good point. Uh, I, I've seen a lot of, co of comments about uh, how the, the Fed has to cut rates now because we've seen how much the, the markets, the stock market specifically, just got wrecked. Uh, and crypto obviously as a byproduct, but look at how much the rate cuts were mentioned during this bloodbath here. Wow. A lot of people were saying, oh, now we need them. Now we have to get um, interest rates back, back down to normal because this is what happens otherwise. So people are definitely aware of that. And maybe the theory is right. Maybe now we do see some cuts. A lot of people were expecting or at least hoping for that last week. And the Fed stood pat, uh, but uh, there's another one coming up in about three weeks now, and we'll see if that changes. You know, I, Brian, I have this theory, and, and I know it's not a conspiracy theory, but I, I think the Fed, they don't want a soft landing. They want a hard landing, and it's because people get greedy, and there's so much liquidity in this system, and the only way to solve it, let it break a little bit, let them feel yeah. the pain, <laughs> right? Wipe wipe out the some job numbers, wipe out the ex excess liquidity, whether they're borrowing against the yen and you know buying equities and so forth, and then they come in and save the day. I think it's a good theory. I mean, you're really we could really get into the weeds and talk about macroeconomics and stuff, which we could maybe do on another call. We don't have time today, yeah. but uh, <laughs> the there is there is the concern of just the overall wealth inequality, not just in the U.S. here where we are, but all over the world. Uh, it's just getting worse and worse. And if we don't have uh, punishment eventually for all of the people who are over leveraging into the stock market or even crypto, um, then then it just gets worse and worse and worse. And the average Joe has has no way to make a living wage. So yeah, I, I think that theory has some merit for sure. Now, I know, look, everybody's pretty much concerned about Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the rising tide that lifts all boats, right? For the for the altcoins and so forth. But anything interesting happening with Ethereum? Um, and, and the reason why I'm asking is being the second largest crypto asset, also having the ETFs. I'm curious if whales are doing anything interesting there. Yeah, good, good question. So just on the on-chain end, we did see this huge transaction volume spike, which was kind of just a result of a lot of coins moving either from panic buyers or panic sellers. This It looks like this for a lot of different coins. Uh, circulation, same thing. The only difference is this is just on-chain transaction volume. This is the unique amount of coins that are being moved on a daily basis. So both just went sky high 
Um, MVRV average traders are well into the red now, like most assets. So that's a good bullish signal as well. You want to buy in when there's a lot of pain. Mm. You're also seeing a lot of shorting going on all of a sudden, mm. uh, not just for ETH, but for many. But Ethereum is one that's kind of standing out right now. So all of a sudden, I think, yeah, this is Binance. Over the last maybe 36-ish hours, we suddenly went into more shorts than longs on the biggest exchange in the world. Uh, and that's a good sign. That means that the next liquidation rounds, whenever they do happen, that would actually uh, benefit the markets because those short liquidations act as rocket fuel for prices to move higher. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned whales. We've got the $1 million plus uh, transactions that just went through the roof here on August 4th. Uh, this was a sign, I think, that there was a lot of dip buying. Whales are not typically panic sellers. They do the opposite of whatever the price uh, correlations do, just like right here where they profit took way back on May 20th, and we got it off shortly after that. So here, uh, I, I think it's pretty clear that they are scooping up more Ethereum while mm -hmm. others are you know, liquidating their longs and uh, can't take any more losses. So that's a very good sign in my opinion. And we can fact check by actually looking at the amount of uh, large wallets. I like the 1,000 to 10,000 tier the most and look at how much they shot up wow. in full screen this. So between August 2nd and now, 121 new 1K to 10K ETH wallets were created. And that's a jump of about two and a half percent. That's massive for just three days. Um, so, so to me, that's a that's one of the best signs I see. Wow, that definitely tells the story there, man. Uh, this is why you got to use data and metrics, not your feelings and emotions. Because <laughs> if you just look at maybe crypto Twitter or what somebody's saying in a chat group, uh, you know, y y y they could they could sway you because we're emotional beings. But if you look at the data. You see smart money is doing the, the contrarian move, always the opposite of the herd. The average trader loses money. Don't forget it. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can't listen to sage advice from people you trust, but uh, this is a zero-sum game at the end of the day. And if you're following the same advice as thousands of other people in a huge trading group, uh, that's that's the crowd that typically gets it wrong. So just be be aware of the group you're in. And typically the smaller groups are right a little more than the larger ones. Mm. Brian, great, great stuff, man. Uh, I, I love this because it, it allows me to think clearly about the markets versus the emotions that come with the pumps and crashes and dumps and so forth. So this is great stuff. I love it, man. A great, uh, great insights on your end. I've been following your content for a while, and uh, I love that we got to stop in and, and check out this carnage that's been going on. Hopefully this gives a little bit of solace for people that have been losing sleep over the, uh, the big plummets we've seen. For sure. All right. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Tony. Great catching up.